Hi, I'm Lori Elliott, aka the voice of Joe from Total Drama Island on Du Bois podcast. I'm loving it. Hey, hey, you get over here. Wait, no, stay there. You smell. What are you doing? What's your problem? I've loved doing Joe's podcast. And if you don't like it, you can stick your head in the sand. Meet Joe. Stay out of my way if you value your Kiwis. <sighs> Woo! That's what I'm talking about. First one on the gut. How did you? You're not even wet. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Voice Podcast. My guest today is a writer, voice actress, actress, comedian, story editor, and producer. You may have heard her voice as Marlo in Braceface, Noah and Atomic, <laughs> Noah and Atomic Betty, Samantha and Time Warp Trio, and Joe in the Total Drama series, and many more. And she has written episodes for the Total Drama series and many more projects as well. So, welcome, Miss Lori Elliott. Welcome, Lori. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. It's an honor. Yeah. It's an honor having you on, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. A Joe. I played a Joe, and your name is Joe, so it works out quite well. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Lori, uh, what have you been up to? How are you doing? How's Lori? I'm doing well. I've been up to uh, a lot of shenanigans over the last while, which is good. Um one thing is doing some development work. Uh, and also, I do stand-up comedy. I don't know if you knew that, Joe. I do stand-up comedy. I work for um, the Canadian chain Yuck Yucks. And Ooh. I tour quite a bit. I've toured, done a lot of touring uh, in the world as well. I've done, I toured in England and uh, South Africa. I've done shows in Rotterdam and Sweden and the States. And lots of shows in Canada. So um, we just finished recording an album, a comedy album that's going to be, it's being edited right now and released um, in the next month or so. So now it's a matter of figuring out what the title is going to be. I don't know yet. So if you have any suggestions, just shoot them on over to me because i got to figure that out. But that's been what I've been doing lately. I've been writing on a couple of shows and also um, doing some voice auditions here and there. Just trying to keep... <coughs> busy? Just trying to keep busy. Yeah. I'm way, I have ADHD, so it's way easier for me to keep busy, uh, obviously, because I, I do get a little hyperactive. Well, I, I think <laughs> I saw your <clears throat> comedy special that was on Just for Laughs, I think, if I remember correctly. Could so, be. I think I saw that. So I've that. done a few. I've done a few. And sometimes when people say, I saw you, I saw your stand up, I'm like, oh, sorry. And then, then I find out whether it was okay or not. <laughs> it was good. It was really funny. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah because I love comedy. I don't know if you know it's the comedians I've interviewed too. Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> I did. I did. I was all, you know more about, I, I bet you, you know more about my job than I do. My stand up <laughs> job and my writing job and voice job. <laughs> You're you're very talented though. You're you're very talented. Like you get like you like you're like a variety. Like you do writing, acting, voice acting, comedy. Like wow, that's amazing. Okay. Thank you, thank you. I I love it. I love doing it. And I think that in Canada, it be we don't have a star system really in Canada. So um, it's it's not like anyone's making those the big huge American money paychecks really. So I always felt in, in entertainment, it was fun to try different things because I started in sketch comedy, then I went to stand up, then I started doing voice auditions and acting auditions, and then I got into writing. And so it, it was this slow progression of just kind of falling into one thing and another. I can't say it was my drive that got me this and I needed to be a stand up. It was kind of, I don't know what I'm doing, but I really like this, and I really like this now, and I'll try this. I really work hard, but I don't really have a, a fixed direction. Just Canadian entertainment, You're doing anything. Nice. <laughs> and I like it. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, Lori, what made you want to become a writer, voice actress, actress, and comedian? And who would you say is your biggest inspiration for all those people? 
Oh, wow. Okay. So what made me want to do it? It's a, it's difficult to say what made me want to do it because as I said, I kind of just fell into it in a way. Uh, I started, I was working at a bar. I was go. I went to U of T, University of Toronto, and I got my um, just BA and didn't really know what I wanted to do. So that's what you do sometimes. You work at a bar to figure it out. Mm-hmm. And one of my bartending friends was in acting and performing and said, do you want to maybe, and I love goofing around. That's, mm-hmm. I love it. I love, I used to get in trouble all the time for it. I, I, I always, I love goofing around and doing act outs and, and stuff. And I like, I like having fun. So we had fun together and he said, Hey, do you want to do, try sketch comedy? And at that time I was all, I don't sure. Okay. Not really understanding. Like I watched Saturday night live, but I never really understood the process of becoming a sketch comic or anything. So he took the lead and he booked a show and I was like, okay, I guess I'm in this. I guess I'm doing this. And that was the first time I ever got on a stage and did comedy at a club, like a, like a little bar club in Toronto called the Rivoli, which has had so many incredible um, acts come through it. Like the kids in the hall used to perform there all the time and uh, like right at the start. And so it was, it was fun to do that. And the more I enjoyed doing the, the sketch comedy and the more people I met, that got me into doing stand-up comedy because I thought, you know, that would be a nice challenge. It would be fun and something different. And I really liked it. I really mm-hmm. liked doing stand-up. And there's a there's a dumb story. My first stand up gig was with um, it was at this, I don't know, kind of bar with a stage. And it was me. And I do you know of Sean Majumder. Oh, oh, Sean Majumder. He's a good actor. He was in the he's, show from too. I don't know if you've ever seen that show yet with Scott McCord, too. Yes, yes. He's an excellent actor, an excellent comic, mm-hmm. and all-around great guy, and he we, he was on the show. So we, we've all kind of, a lot of stand-up comics end up getting into voice work and, and writing and acting and, that, and all that, as, as you know. And so Sean was there, I think it was Sean's show, and a bunch of other comics. And my act, and I brought a ton of friends, this was my first time ever doing it, and my uh, my act was pretty much all fart jokes. Because I'm very mature. I'm not mature at all. I am not mature. And I write a lot of that. And I killed because all my friends were there. So they were like, yeah, yeah, I can bring it on. Support Lori. Then the next show I did, I didn't have friends out. And I bombed so bad. So that made me realize, all right, so this is all on me. I got to make my jokes funny. I can't just bring friends to laugh at me. and that just made it more of a challenge. So I thought I've got to do it a third time to see if I can actually make people laugh and concentrate on it. And it worked out well. And then I just kept on going and that's kind of trickled into uh, me meeting an agent, getting referred to an agent and then me, uh, you know, moving on from there to trying different things. So the writing though is my main, that's my main job. And I do stand up as well at night. They both feed each other. The Farm's actually a good show, too, because like, they're actually going to be on their second season. They'll be filming, I think, sometime in August. Um, okay. Okay. See? You know way more. You know way more about what's going on. I got to come to you. I have to be like, hey, Joe, can you tell me what's happening with this show, please? <laughs> I think you'll like it. Like, it's like it's like a horror. Do you like horror at all? It's yes. like, like a horror. Okay, it's like a horror-esque it's hard to explain. Like these things, these monster creature things come. They don't know what they are at all either. They come out like at nighttime, like after eight p.m., and they okay. they try to grab the townspeople. If that makes sense, it's 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 crazy, and you have to see. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Sorry. Okay, oh, I'm into that. I like that. I really like that a lot. I love the kind of. I listen to a lot of kind of spooky podcasts, and Ooh. yeah. Do you listen to a lot of podcasts? Oh yeah, I, I have a lot. Favorites? I have a. Uh, do you know? You know. Pete Holmes, of course, the comedian. Oh, of have you course. heard his have you heard his podcast? At all yes, yet? hilarious. And you interviewed him. Yes, he, he's actually a close friend of mine too. He's really nice, down earth guy. He seems really nice. I actually yeah. bumped into him at Just for Laughs extremely briefly, 
and That's we were picking up our package, like our package with our passes and all that. And uh, and he was beside me getting his his pass, and he was so nice. Whereas I was like, it's Pete Holmes. It's so weird seeing people you're you're who you admire so much. Like I met Sarah Silverman at the same at the oh, same just for last, and she just sat beside me. We were waiting for transport to a gig. And just sat beside me, introduced herself so kindly, like I didn't know who she was, but just nice enough to assume that not everybody knows who she is. It was like, hi, I'm Sarah. Nice to meet you. That's yes. cool. Ah, some is, comics are awesome. Well, is Pete, like, really tall in real life, too? I don't yes. know he's tall. Is he, like, really? He was, well, I'm five, four and a half. And oh, I'm at like that six, age six, where I'm starting to shrink, I think. So, <laughs> and he was, like, way taller than me. I was all, hi, Pete. I was all, hi. I don't know who you are. <laughs> He's very nice, though. If you want, I could, like, after this podcast, I could mess, text him, like, say, comedian Lori Elliott says, hello. I got you. Oh, oh, that is so kind. That is so, I don't want to put you in an awkward position, though. That's fine. I know that He's that cool. Is. Oh, He's that's cool. so nice. I got you. Yes. Well, believe it or not, the last time we chatted was two nights ago. We were talking about, like, some shows that are coming out for him. Some like, oh. new releases. He was telling me some scoop. If that makes sense. Oh, I love the scoop. That's great. And I'm glad to hear he's doing stuff. He's working. Mm -hmm. There's so much, so much TV. There's mm -hmm. so much TV now. I love it. He's a, he's a very nice guy. Like, and then now, if we also saw, I had the comedian on Ben Schwartz. I'm sure you know his work. He's popular. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I love Toe Drama because it was a big part of my childhood. Like, I watched it. I was like six or seven, I want to say. It was because that's yeah. when I released. Yeah. It's, I don't know of many other than sixteen. Mm -hmm. That's the only show, by the way. Which is another great show, and it, and then along the same kind of humor, total drama came out, and the the characters the long, a similar age group, and it was mm -hmm. just such a great show to be able to develop the characters and their relationship, and also be able to have tons of action, and just people hurting themselves. <laughs> <laughs> That was one of the funnest parts of writing, like being in a writing room, is just figuring out, okay, what can we do that we'll be able to get away with when it comes to them mm -hmm. sabotaging each other and, and mm -hmm. just falling and wiping out and everything. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Now, uh, Lori, what's your favorite like project you've written on and favorite voice acting role and acting role, your favorites? Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. There's, that's a lot. That, there's so many. I feel like, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was, sorry about that. I would say you ran so many cool shows. Like you've ran on, like, I want to say like, if I mark like 16, almost naked animals. My, my, not, one of my favorites of my base, there's a vampire. Can't oh, lake bottom. Yeah. You've ran on so many cool projects. So I've been very lucky. I've been so lucky and to, to have the opportunity to be in a room with all of these other talented writers, mm -hmm. some of whom are, they are dedicated writers. They went to school for writing. Some are like me who just, ah, hi, I just flew in from stand-up comedy and I am hope I know what I'm doing. And then there are other people who are a little bit of both or actors. So it's, it's so cool to meet all of these different people and then you collaborate with them and, and whatever, episode you're working on just gets better and better as everybody just throws in ideas so it's it's really great and so to think of what there's so many factors when it comes to what would be my favorite show to work on but gosh I could say good things about all of them and the laughs I've had because I always you always think of of the days where you couldn't stop laughing and I know for total drama I have to say some of the funnest, like the most insanely hilarious writing rooms I've ever been in, for sure. And that was a lot with uh, Terry McGurin leading it and, uh, and Alex uh, Ganatakis, who is another fantastic uh, showrunner and writer and has so much on the go right now. And I'm trying to think of, oh yeah, so this is fun. So one time in a total drama room, mm -hmm. I think it was for total, it was total drama rama and Ooh. yeah, total drama rama. And Jen, we were talking about uh, Carvel ice cream cakes 
Do you have Carvels in the States? Because I think they were maybe just a buffalo thing. But they had Fudgy the Whale. And it was a cake, chocolate cake, and it was an ice cream cake. And his name was Fudgy the Whale. And everybody remembered Fudgy the Whale. And so we were trying to write an episode about ice cream and laughing about Fudgy the Whale. And then the next day, Jen Perch, who from Fresh, comes in and she's baked a fudge or baked yeah she made the cake she didn't make an ice cream cake because it just would have melted all the way over but she made this amazing fudgy the whale cake that is cool and we all ate it and then got tired but it was really good but just yeah yeah we've had a lot of fun in the in the total drama writing room but i don't know what i i can't say what would be my favorite show ever to work on because like it's with people. Mm-hmm. I, I try, I want to find the best in everybody. That's what I look for is like what is the best thing I can, I can find. Mm-hmm. Cause you never know what their day was like, what their life was like. So you just want, Oh, I froze. Oh, you're, I, you're completely good. Am I, okay. you're I, good. Am I, if you saw my face right now, let's see if I can do a screen thing of how am I frozen? Bonkers. No, you're fine. (laughs) You're fine. I'm going to, okay. Can I put, is there any way I can put this photograph into this to show you? Do I put it in the chat? If if that'll work, if not, you could take a, do you have like a phone on you? You could take a picture then you could show, like do this, like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, that works. That works because that's still looking at. Hi. <laughs> did you see a ghost, Laura? Sorry, did you see? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so, uh, how's the ghost over there, Laura? <laughs> oh, just fine. Just fine. Just you fine. Know? You know, I... just under my desk. Now, do you have like a favorite acting role then, and voice acting role you've done, Laura? Did you say? Ah, uh, well. Uh, I got to say, Joe was really fun. I love doing Joe because Joe made it, it was almost like a um, therapy session as well as doing a playing a character because I just got to I just got to yell at stuff and yell at people and be angry and and insult people. So it's better to do that as a scripted acting role than just walking out the door in real life saying, hey, you idiot, nice <laughs> pants or whatever. Better to do it when it's scripted <laughs> um what else did i love what other roles have i loved to do uh gosh you did marlo which is cool sorry <laughs> that was really fun marlo was really fun um and when i started out doing mm-hmm. voice work i did a voice workshop at, with karen gura and i ended up getting a lot of auditions for young boy roles mm-hmm. never ever women it was always wow. young boys and I was all fine. That's fine. Okay. And so I, I went, and then I remember when I got, I got my first audition for a woman who was aged 30 or something. I wrote back to my agent. I was all, this isn't right. I don't audition for women. <laughs> I'm a young boy. So, I, but so doing playing Noah on atomic Betty Ooh, was that's really nice. fun. That was a great time. Um, and I love playing. I love Marlo. I love Tom. Time Warp Trio was super fun. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I think Fritz and Timothy goes to school. Let's go. On. That was my fa- that was my very very first acting role, and I did not know what I was doing at all. Mm-hmm. And thank goodness I had Merlan Ridley. Oh, she would be God. an interest. Have you interviewed Merlan? No, she's a good, she's really good though, by the way. She's really good. She's very strong. Yeah, she's, she would be a fascinating interview because she is one of the nicest people in the world and she has met everybody. She has been in like voice rooms with everybody because she directs and casts. Wow. That is really so, cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very, very neat. And um, then I got to, there are some of my favorite voice jobs are the little ones because I'm not a main, like I don't get a lot of, you know, principal actor roles or recurring actor roles, but I get little, little spurts here and there. 
and I got to do an actor role on an episode of Forget About It. Ooh, that's cool. That's a good show. Yeah, and then nice. and the, no, it wasn't Forget About It. Oh, I did get to do an actor role on Forget About It because I was writing on Forget About It. But I also got to do a role on a show called Mother Up. And that was long, long ago. I think, gosh, I think it was in maybe 2010 or some. I don't know. Wow. I don't know time. Sorry. I also don't time know flies. Time. It time does. Flies. It does. I'm telling you. Oof. But that was star. That show starred. Um, oh, my gosh. I'm having a. I'm, oh, my gosh. She's right there in front of me. Eva Longoria. You're having a, you're having a brain fart. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I am. I am. Brain fart. Yeah. Gotta write it down, write an episode about those. Um, <laughs> Eva Longoria was the star. So that, I got to go, I was at the studio and got to meet her. That's cool. That is really so cool. tiny. She was, she was so beautiful and so petite. I always thought she was petite, but she was like petite, petite. and stunning and an extremely st- smart person, like very, very smart. So that was kind of neat. So I have, as you can tell, I don't have a particular favorite. I just, well, mind you, I did, Joe, I absolutely loved doing. I loved it. But I, I have great, I have great experiences or, or nuggets of the experience that I loved in pretty much all of them. That's awesome. So, yeah. yeah. If, if you wouldn't mind, can you do some of Joe's voice? Because I know it sounds like your voice, but can, if you wouldn't mind, can you do some? Like a line or something. Sorry. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to remember uh, what would be a line. If you throw me a line. Uh, okay, I could. I could throw you a line if you want me to help you. Okay, yeah, so throw me a line. Okay, so you know when uh, Joe comes out of the water and then Dawn's like on the beach. She said, "You're not even what." I can't do it, but you're not even what. <laughs> no, if you remember that at all. I don't remember the quick the line, but I guess I could. We would be along the lines of, "You're not even wet." What is going on with you? Hey, Brick. Nice face. What do you feed it? Is that similar? Okay. <laughs> so when I hear like the people do the total drama voice, I like freak out inside. You know, like it's a crazy. You know, it's so cool. <laughs> it's it's pretty. It's pretty fun. They always have to play me a reference because I don't have. Uh, I can, if you like, I can play you a reference. I have one ready. If you want me to. Play yeah, it deal it. Play it, you. and then I'll see I if you. I can. If I if I still got, got the Joe in me. Got you. Because believe it or not, you, you know Peter Oldring, of course, right? Yes, Oldring. I love Peter Oldring. I I had to play him a reference because he he figured out how to do Tyler and Ezekiel, and then after oh he, after he heard it, spot on, just like. Oh it. yeah, yeah. So. I understand people because it's been years. Like, yes. you, your season was in 2012. That's been 10 years ago. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> it's like wow. Sorry. And that was actually the year Danielle, my little sister, that one that drew that picture, yeah. was born. She was born. Oh in 2012. my gosh! So, born crazy. 2012, and already can draw better than I can, but like way better. <laughs> she, she loves it though. Like she loves Joe Tushing. She's very funny. She loves. She loves that she makes fun of. Brick. Brick, but like were they or weren't like they you know it just felt like there might have been a connection there right? <laughs> okay i think i okay ready ready Laura? i'm ready I'll, okay i'll see if you can hear it okay Woo! that's what i'm talking about first one on the skirt how did you you're not even wet huh? that's and uh, dawn talks there. yes yes Woo-hoo! how did you you're not even wet. Okay. All right. That's similar. Oh my! I'm sorry, Lori. That's oh, that's really good, Lori. I'm sorry. That's really cool. Thank you. Th- yeah. Will you please be my voice director from now on? Like, I actually, <laughs> Alf, Alf, I told you, Lori. I did as a career. I want to become like a writer or director. I really? love to. I actually believe in that, Lori. Love to write scripts. Believe in that as a hobby. You would well get into it. Do you? Do you have? Um, I don't know. Is there a, a, a? I don't even know how old you are, and I'm. 20. I don't, you're twenty. Okay. So, oh my gosh, you're so young. You've got so much ahead of you that you can enjoy. So, uh, if, do you have any college type thing that you could go to, or a? a I want it. I want to go to college, but they're still like closed. And I want to do yeah. virtual. I'm sorry. I, I'm not allowed to go like in person. If that makes sense. I don't. I'm like that. Oh, sorry. That I am too. Actually, 
I am too. And interesting, my my husband is uh, he teaches. He's a, a college professor at a college called George Brown, and he teaches the culinary. He's in the culinary department. So he's a chef, an excellent chef, and now he, he teaches, and he loves it. He absolutely loves it. I'm a vegetarian, and he was in charge of the butchery department, which is quite – there's a show for you. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know where, where was I going with this. Um, Yes, he t- so he teaches at George Brown. Where was I going with this? Is my ad? Oh yeah, he has he has uh, he has he's dyslexic. Wow. So, so during the pandemic, he had to do a lot of online stuff, and and he had to do a little coursework himself. I hated it because he not, he needs to be there and needs to yeah, see. Be there. Yeah, because in my opinion, like a virtual, like because I had to have a virtual high school graduation, it's like oh. tough. It's like so hard, you know, yes. like virtual school. In my yeah. opinion, it's like tough virtual school. Yes, I agree. I agree. It's for mm-hmm. some people, there it's fine, but for I would say the majority of people, being around other people helps you learn. Yeah, and and it just, I don't know. It's it's we're not supposed to be alone. Yeah, you're right. So, so I, I completely get it. If you like to wait until you can be around people, you can have a discussion group or a, or a writer's Got room, it. then that's the best time to do it. If, I bet you if you saw my scripts, you're like, oh, my God. Sorry. sorry look. I know I would. I would. If you've got an original, send it on yeah. over. Got you. I, I actually I love writing. Like I was trying to write like 10 pages a day, actually, Lori. Believe it or not, as a hobby. So. <laughs> So, yeah. you're better, see, you're a better writer than I am, too. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's cool, though. You're, is he like, so he's a chef, you said, like a culinary yes. person? So, that's chef, it. What, what, if I'm going to ask, what's his name? Sorry. His Gloria. name is Stuart Betteridge. Stuart, so Chef Stuart? Yeah, Stuart. Chef Stuart or okay. Chef. They, all the students say, yes, Chef. Yes, Chef. Mm-hmm. And uh, I say, yes, Chef, sometimes. But uh, he's he's great. Stu's and a lot of my comedy act is based on him, and he does not care. He's it's funny. A lot of comics will tell you that the people in their lives are way funnier than they are. They're just kind of channeling the the people in their lives who wouldn't want to get up on stage. And my husband is so funny, and he loves teaching. He loves his students. All he wants to do is is. All he cares about is a good experience for his students. So you know when you have teachers that really impact you, mm-hmm. and then there are teachers you don't even remember because they maybe just weren't in the best place at the time mm-hmm. when they were teaching. He's one of the ones that that you remember. One of the cool good. ones. One of yeah, cool. I like that. Yeah, he's cool. He's silly. He's he switches it up. He's generous. Yeah. So, so he's not like the you know evil chef in my opinion from Total Drama. No, <laughs> no, he's no, he's no, he's no chef, chef. Although he can be quite bossy because you know you're using knives and very hot, hot True. things. So True. sometimes he's got to get their attention and be like, "Stop what you're doing." <laughs> and there are certain knives in our house that I'm not allowed to use because I'm a bit klutzy. Mm. Yeah, he's like, don't touch that knife, Lori, because it's so sharp. <laughs> now, uh, <clears throat> Lori, what is yes. your favorite? What is your favorite Total Drama episode you've written? Your favorite? Oh, I can tell oh, you mine. Wow. That's easy. That's easy. You have yours? Yes. My okay, fa- actually, it's actually my favorite episode of all time too, which is crazy. No way. Okay, you have to tell me first. Can you tell me first? If it's up to you, you like me to? Yes, please. Okay. Do you remember the X Files? Yes. Episode? Xbox. That's my favorite episode of all time, actually. That's my favorite episode. Really? It <laughs> is. Awesome. It is because I got I I we were in the room okay. and you don't know what episode you're getting to write. Mm-hmm. So it's you. It, sometimes it has to do with the order of how, like the order of writers. So it's like this writer, this writer, this writer, this writer. Then you switch it, then it's this writer again, this writer again, this writer again. So it's a, sometimes it's that, sometimes it's just luck of the draw and whatnot. And so when we were discussing the Area 51 episode, I love, I love sci-fi. I love all like space stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I was like, oh, I hope I get that one. And I got it. And so it was really fun to write, but quite controversial with respect to the storyline and the relationships when with like mm-hmm. Gwen and Duncan. Was it Gwen, Duncan and um, Courtney and Courtney? Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. No, you please help me. Help me. Remember. But yeah, that was I'm so happy you loved that episode because I loved it, too. Uh, do you remember Ryan? The, okay, my favorite, one well, of my favorite scenes in the episode. Do you remember the Running Man scene? Do you remember that? Yes. Scene in the yes. Where, with the, where the alien goes on Owen's face and he sings like that, or he does like the wedgie tip. I can't do it, but you know what I mean. <laughs> when I see that, I laugh out so loud when I want to see that. <laughs> and was he singing "Take Me Out to the Ball Game" or something? That was like the funniest episode I think I've seen all, the whole series in my life. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, you made me so happy because I forgot about the running man. <laughs> if you like, I could play the clip for you if you like. <laughs> I'd love that, was, that so much. That, that was funny. And then Scott, like, how does he do his Owen voice look? Because it doesn't like sound like his normal voice, too. I'm sorry, but it doesn't sound like his normal voice. No, that's the thing. I can't do anything that sounds like it's not me. So when people can do stuff like Scott McCord or Dwayne Hill or Terry, I'm just, whoa, Ju- Julie Lemia. Whew. Okay, sorry about that. It's loading. Oh, no, no, that's fine. I still have uh, murder eyes on my, on my screen. I'm still <laughs> staring at myself. Okay, <laughs> can you, uh, you can see yes, that? Yes, I can. Three, two, one, and revenge. <laughs> To the ball game, take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I never come back. Sorry if you can't see it because of the glare. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I saw the silhouette and I remembered it. And thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That was but... funny. Oh, and that was. Those so, silly things. Yes. Those are some of my favorite things to write. And when they, and because they get cut also if the episode's going too long. Because the first mm. thing you do is you cut jokes. You can't mm. cut story or nothing will make sense. So mm. to have something like that make it in and, uh, and, and resonate with you, that's That was best. funny. Like when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, that moment's so funny. <laughs> like what? It came out of nowhere. Like what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. So, I'm always trying to get random stuff in, and it, it doesn't work very often, rightfully so. Funny. But that that uh, that worked. Oh, that yeah. was like a that's like a top top tier moment in total drama history. So that was fun. I am I'm I'm very humbled, and I'm so grateful that you said that. Thank you. Because as writers, I don't know if you've realized this or if any of us have told you, a lot of us have imposter syndrome where Mm. we uh, think we're fooling everyone into thinking we can write. Okay. And that one day everyone's going to find out, wait a minute, Lori can't write. (laughs) And then fire us. You're really good though. Like it was really, it was really funny and thought thought through like, oh my God, that was really cool. Thank you. Thank you. But I have to say, it's such a group effort. And when you Thank see you. the story editor's name, mm-hmm. they are the ones that they pull everything together and mm-hmm. they will edit the script to make sure that every script is in line with the show and with the um, just with how the show works and feels. And so sometimes, say, uh, Terry will edit a script of mine he'll add some jokes in there that are so beyond funny that i can't take credit for but but it's the it's the gift of collaboration it's the gift of more people involved can in the writing process can make a, an episode so great but the running man one that was me so <laughs> that was funny sorry that was really funny no, that's- you don't have to apologize for calling anything funny. <laughs> <laughs> so I take it. So that is your favorite episode you've ever yep. written. Yes, it is. And I'm. it's so funny that you said that because I know that there was some, there were some people who were upset about the, who got voted off on that episode. Oh, okay. I'm not, no spoilers. Cause no spoilers. 
Yeah, but, yeah. no spoilers, mm-hmm. but there were definitely some people upset because people really connect to certain characters, as you know, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, yeah. If, if one of us writers messes with their favorite character, <laughs> now, that's good. Since you're a writer, did you, were you, who was the one, or were you the one that came up with the love triangle of Courtney, Don, Duncan, and Gwen? Were you the one, or was that someone? No, no, Sorry. that was, that one, I'm, I don't, Sorry. I can't remember specifically. Sorry. No, that's a good question. I don't remember specifically, but what I would guess is that would have come from, um, in that would have come within the room, but it would have been vetted by Tom and Jen. Usually Tom or Jen and uh, and um, George Elliot from Elliot Animation, mm. who is a fascinating person. Like mm. if if you wanted to expand your interview repertoire to animators, this guy is the most fascinating person, one of the most fascinating and intelligent people I've ever met. That and is. I've never seen him in a pair of pants, only shorts. <laughs> That could have that could have gone very wrong. I could have said something very different. I've never seen him in a pair of pants. I think you say Only pair shorts. of pants or shorts. I would say, oh my god, yeah, he's just yeah. no <laughs> or shorts or skirts. <laughs> no, <laughs> just pants. he's always in shorts wow. all year round. That's almost like me, believe it or not, more because really? I like I love very. I don't know if shorts are more because why well, wear pants? I get too sweaty and hot. If that makes sense. I'm sorry if that sounds yeah. goofy, but I get too hot and sweaty. <laughs> No, it doesn't. And that, I think that's the same for him. I think he runs hot and he works out really hard. And mm-hmm. you always see him. He's so, he's like, and he's an Elliot, two L's, two T's, just like me. No relation, and, I'm assuming. No relation, or wow. maybe like way, way, way back. So good thing we never dated. But uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. sorry. <laughs> that could have turned out wrong. Whoa. But, Sweet home Alabama. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Kidding, <laughs> So I had to do some jokes. I'm sorry. You guys, I mean, come on. <laughs> We're, we go way back. But um, he, yeah, he's fascinating. And he, he works so hard and he's so creative and just does not stop. So he's really, he'd be a really interesting person for you to, to interview because he gives you the scoop on the animation side. And and yeah. also just on how talented he is, um, so that's what uh, I can try. To, why did I even bring him up? See, this is the ADHD. I start going, Phew. bring me back in, I, Joe. <laughs> uh, you're talking about animators. How like maybe that he bought the. You said we were talking about the love triangle. Remember, oh, that's right. That's right. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. I was trying to remember. I was trying to think of like I was trying to. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry. Nobody my my brain. Sorry. No, you did it. Thank you. You went do, 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 do. Okay. So, yes. So, George is in the room. Because sometimes in a room, you you come up with an act, like a like a challenge for Total Drama. Mm. But you don't know if it can actually be animated correctly, like to be effective. Because oh. certain types of animation, you can do things. Other types don't come off as effectively. So it would be, can we do this? Well, and he would always be able to figure out a way to work around and do it. So that's the key. That to me is the, the um, it, it, that shows me a really great animator willing to go the distance and try and make it work out. So that's why they're all in the room. But so the love triangles and any major story components like that, mm-hmm. it, it is discussed between um, the story editors, which would have been over the years, it would have been, um, like Alex Ganatakis and and uh, Shelley Scarrow, Terry McGurin, um, just people running, uh, running it through, and they would they would say, okay, we were thinking of this, and then in the room we try and figure out different arcs and stuff for that. So it's never. Sometimes it is one person who has this brain explosion. <laughs> you know what I was gonna say. Uh, <laughs> And it would, uh, and it would all of a sudden be, well, yes, we found the solution, and we'd go oh. that way. So I can't quite remember, but it was something along the lines of one of those things I just mentioned. Before I ask you my next question, let's see if okay. you know a little total drama trivia. I won't. Do you, <laughs> do you know? You know, like when the characters like stand, like normally, like for example, like you know, your character standing right there. Do you know what yeah. they're what they usually do with their hands? Pose. Oh, that sounds goofy. Do you know what um, they? 
are what they do with their hands. And that pose. Like fists? Usually when they stand, I don't know if you can see, usually when they stand, they do like this pose. I don't know if you can see my hands like that. Usually they do oh, like okay, the, yeah, the, the yeah, yeah. sideways yeah. up. Usually whenever the characters stand. So I don't know, that's like a little fact. I know. Oh, I all the characters, that. I don't know. Yeah. That's, now that's all I'm going to see when I watch episodes. I'm just going to okay, okay. Because I've, no, I've noticed that like when they stand, sometimes the characters, like they, like they do that sometimes. I've noticed. That's, very, that's, a, good, that's a very cool observation. And now that you've said it, you know when people say the red dress or whatever, or mm. whatever, and now I'm going to be seeing them standing like that every time, and I'm going to enjoy it. That'll make <laughs> me think of you, and I'll be like, oh, Jill's doing well. So, yeah, because I, I, believe it or not, Lori, this might blow your mind. You know how many times I've seen each season of Total Drama? No. Okay, this might sound crazy. You could guess, you could guess. Okay. Is it over 10? Is it under 20? 15 plus. <gasps> Whoa! Yes. I think you need a trophy for that. I think you deserve some sort of reward. That's fantastic. I, I just love told you. I'm like, believe it or not, like, my, my, you know, my, nie- my little sister, niece, she's like crazy. She wanted to watch Toll Drama backwards. That makes sense. I don't know why backwards, but we watched it backwards. She, like, it was like, she wanted to watch Pac-2 Island first. Yeah. Then she wanted to do uh, <clears throat> All-Stars, then Revenge of the Island, then World Tour, then Action. Then I was like, what? Wow. Okay. That's yeah. cool, though. Yeah. Did you, did you learn anything new from watching them backwards? backwards? I was like, whoa. Like, it, was, it was different, if that makes sense. Like, I, cause, maybe because it was like the most recent, if I, per se. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Most recent seasons. So it felt weird if that makes sense. It's yeah. still good though, you know. Like I've, I, like I watched it f- like through like in order, backwards, favorite seasons orders. If that makes sense, like you know, yeah. I've, like, favorite season over others. Of, you know, of course. Of course, yeah. That's the point. If I, if you like a show, you're gonna have your favorites, your least favorites, and there's nothing wrong with that. And Best you, character, can... Joe. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 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 What um uh, uh what is your favorite season if I if I can Ooh. ask is sure. that okay what you want to take, should I tell you I want to take okay. a guess I want to take a guess I love guessing I love guessing okay. things and okay. it annoys my friends but uh, I'm always like, okay. let me guess welcome to here. guess the uh, uh, total drama season with Joe and this is my yes. contestant Lori Ali <laughs> hi hi I'm a big fan of the show Joe I watch it all the time I can't believe I'm on the show guess the favorite uh, season of Joe's total drama. Um, I am going to guess. Beep, 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 if you get it right, beep. you get a million dollars and a brand new car. Oh yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Is it All Stars? Damn it. You get one more guess. Do I'll I get, get uh, five hundred thousand dollars and a half a car now? <laughs> you split the car. In you half. Split the car in half. Cut the money in half, so it's completely useless. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Do you want a hint? I give you a yes, hint. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. You know how there's like odd seasons. Like like one is Island. Three would be World Tour. Five yes. would be All Stars. It's an odd number. Okay, five would be all stars. That should help. I'm sorry. One. What was three? Was it three? Was three? Was that the one I did? <laughs> three, uh, three was World Tour, the singing season of the Hubs. With X Files. X Files. Yes. That's so it's three. And my favorite season is three. Three, three. World, World Tour. Tour. Yes. World Tour was so fun. That was really? so fun. Yes. I think uh, I think Terry and Alex were our editors, so they're our bosses. <laughs> And we got to write a song for every single episode. That is cool. That yeah. is really cool. It was, that was really fun. It's a fun challenge to be able to write a song. And also um, the fact that I got the area. I think we were at Area 52. Was that where we were? Area, that was a special. Yeah, that was really special. There are some episodes that you write and you're so excited to write. And that was definitely one of them. And it felt like it went, the process went very smoothly. 
And you never know as a writer, I know, and you want to write, so I'm telling you this right now. You just never know. Sorry, what, I never know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Put your pen and paper in. Uh, <laughs> you write this down. No, it, you just don't know what episode is going to be accepted by the um, executives and the network mm-hmm. and everything mm-hmm. as awesome or if it's going, you might think it's the best thing you've ever written and then it'll come back and it's just like, we have to rework this whole thing. Mm-hmm. And then you're just, what is, what is wrong with my head that I would have thought that was the best thing I've ever written? But it's just how it goes sometimes. And that's okay. So you have to give yourself permission to have those experiences. You learn a lot from them. You learn to have a thick skin and you learn the show must go on and you just keep moving forward. So don't let, don't let anything discourage you when it comes to notes and all that, but don't be too precious of your stuff because a lot of times um, you've got bosses when you're writing for a show and they've hired you to write in the voice of the show. So if they say that joke doesn't work for our show, it's still probably a good joke. Put it in your joke bank and keep it for another show you're working on. And sometimes I keep it for my stand-up and I try and work it into uh, a joke for on stage. So it's, it's fun. It's fun to do different things in entertainment. It really is. So you might, you might want to start, you might start getting into writing and then you might all of a sudden say, Hey, I would much rather animate or I want to, I want to do voice work or I want to voice direct or sound engineer. You just never know. I mean, you are so comp. You are more than competent. Like, Thank you've you. got a great podcast going on, Thank and you were able to call up all sorts of stuff. Facts. Thank you. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're welcome. Thank you. If, if I had to rank, my because the world tour are like amazing and catchy songs. That probably be my my fa- first season. My favorite season is the third season. My yeah. second favorite season would have to be probably Revenge of the Island, Joe's season. You know, of course. Ah, oh, yes. And then the third season, that know, my third choice would be, for, you know, third, you know, third would probably be the first season. Of yes. Yeah. And my fourth choice would probably be Pakatu Island. Yeah. And then All Stars, and then Action. That okay. Okay. Mind. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I like that. I like right. that. Thank you. Those are good. And do you have any um, favorite characters from different? From like, it, different it could seasons. be a. Yeah, from it might be from your least favorite season, but it could mm-hmm. be your favorite character. Who knows? I could okay. Well, let's see. First season, Owen. Second oh. season, Owen's <laughs> <He's> so <laughs> funny. Second season would probably be mm, <clears throat> probably Owen again. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Third season probably be me, like Tyler. Or Owen again? I'm sorry, I'm like a big Owen. Person. I'm a huge Owen is so funny and uh, just writing jokes for Owen. You could do it all day because he's just such a fun character. He's so likable and nice. Yes. That when yeah. things happen to him, it mm-hmm. makes it more. He doesn't get angry. He just gets confused and scared. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and then my the fourth season probably Joe. You know your character. Yeah. And it then, doesn't uh, have to be me, though. You don't have to. I don't have to be your favorite. I'm just happy I'm on this mm-hmm. call with you. So, and then the the fifth season, I'm trying to like all stars. Maybe Sam. Maybe. Ah, oh, so. yeah, I like Sam a lot. Yeah. Sam and, was cool. And then the sixth season, probably I want to say Sean, you know, the zombie guy. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Of so. course. Well, you like you, you like the scary stuff, so you want the zombie guy. Yeah. So those are the characters. There. That's very cool. That's very cool. What I like, I love the, what was the, what was the guy, the evil guy? It's time to evil. Oh, Max. That, Max. Max. <laughs> he made AKA me laugh a lot. Bustel. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Because I actually, I don't know if I told you, I actually interviewed him too. Bustel, the voice of Max. I actually interviewed him too. Oh, wow. That was, was that cool? Was it fun? Yeah. When he yeah. did that, you just said the, the evil thing. I was like, oh my God. Sorry. We, we laughed so much with the time to evil, just how it makes no grammatical sense, but also so fit that character. Oh my gosh, it was, that was a blast. That was a blast. Now, 
can you walk me through audition process? Like, how did you get the role of Joe? How did well, you? Know? A classic. What? I guess this one. So auditioning is, has morphed over the years, interestingly. Mm. So when I started 20, I think my first audition was like 20 something years ago for, um, that was for Timothy Goes to School. And you go in to the studio, like mm. a, to the recording studio. And I really was like, I didn't want to look like I didn't know what I was doing and I really didn't know what I was doing. So I kind of just, okay, I go in this door and they're like, no, no, go in the booth. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I figured out where the booth was. And Mm. then I walked up to a microphone. So I was okay. I obviously knew. And then I had to put headphones on. And then you have the lines in front of you on a music stand and you just, the voice director who was Merlan, Merlin, I've I've known her since the start of my voice career, and she was so welcoming and kind and didn't make me, because the more nervous you get, the worse you are. So she just makes you feel nice and comfortable. And um, so I, that was, you just go in and you do a bunch of takes with their direction, then you leave. And then if you're lucky enough to get a call back, then you go back and you do it again. And then you leave And then, you know, whether sometimes you have to go in for another callback and it's with the whole like a whole bunch of cast members who Mm. like people who are up for different roles. And so you go in together into the booth so that they can see how your voices bounce off of each other to make sure that one character isn't going to sound too much like another character and make it confusing. Mm -hmm. And if all of that works, that's how they I feel like that's how they did it for um, Timothy Goes to School. And I think they do it for a lot. So sometimes your final audition will be you go in, they bring other people in with you, two people leave, two more people come in, then you do it again, then you leave, someone comes in who's trying for your part. You try and trip them as they go in and you can't, you end up falling yourself. Then I got the call and I got the gig. So that was the audition process for me for that. And then, but they send you the sides early. So do you know, you know what sides are, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. So they send you the sides, you work on the sides. So you know more than I do. So I need your advice. Um, You work on the sides at home and then you go in and you have to be able to, you have to be able to take direction Mm -hmm. and to be able to show that your voice has the, um, has the uh, ability to have the longevity that it might need to carry an entire episode or an entire series. Because if you can only do one voice for, say, a minute, and then your voice cacks out, that doesn't help anybody. You know, when you start going, I can't do the voice anymore. Which, and I can't sing either. I am a terrible singer. And I've had to sing in episodes. Oh, God. It's embarrassing. But anyway, um, then it's morphed into once we got cell phones, there would be a lot mm. of self tapes. So it would be self record, send it in. And then then they would call you in to do the, the in studio audition and then basically pretty much be the same type of process. So and for this one, it was I sent in my voice. And because I write on it and they know me, they were like, okay, here you go. So that was one of those gigs that I just, I got very, it was an extremely fast and lucky process, truly. So that was the, that some, and sometimes that happens where you just, all the stars align and you get it. And other times you send in a voice record where everyone's like, that's amazing. We loved it. We never want to see you again, though, because we're hiring someone else. <laughs> yeah. you, you think you nailed it and it's really bad. So, yeah. Does that help a bit? Like, does that? Oh. Are the, yeah, oh. that's basically oh. I'm trying to think of other awful. Like, are there any awful voice record situations during COVID was weird. Because you had to, 
you have to go in with your mask, call from downstairs. Oh. They come let you in, yeah. sanitizing and go. It was oh. so bare bones. The director, what the voice director was on Skype, on, Skype. on a TV. Cool. Yeah. I know. I was interested <laughs> that you do Skype. Yeah. Because uh, Skype's more better for me, if that makes sense. Like, Because for some reason, when I do Zoom, crashes. So yeah. <laughs> This is really good to know because everybody talks about Skype as being, well, no one Skypes anymore because of Zoom. But yeah. being on this, this is the clearest. Clear as day. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's so clear. I'm going to use Skype now. Yeah, because yeah, whenever I do Zoom, like, pause, like every, like, two minutes, pauses. You know, like, when it freezes, I mean? Freeze. Yeah. It's like, really? <laughs> and you can yeah, the conversations can, they, like they're a little off. bit stunted. Yeah. Yeah. So this so is really good. Favorite total drama character other than Joe? Who's your favorite oh. character? Oh, boy. Well, okay, oh. I love Owen, obviously. Owen okay. is one o. of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, let's see. He There's plays some... such a c c lovable character, Scott. Sorry. He just, yes. Oh. Yeah, he really, mm -hmm. really does. He's so funny. I love writing for Beth. Ooh, Beth. A.K.A. Sarah Gedd. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> So good, so good. I love writing for Beth because she's. Such, I like because she's such a weirdo. <laughs> she's a, believe it. No offense to this. This my brother, one of my brother's friends. She looks just like one of my brothers. Oh, so. hang out with her because <laughs> she's fun and she's weird. Then <laughs> I hope she wears the wings too. I love it. Sorry. Sorry. I love it. You're saying. <laughs> But Beth, yeah. sorry. I love Beth. Beth makes me laugh a lot because a lot of her, uh, a lot of her antics come from left field. I like it when I'm surprised by by characters, and um, like there was a. This is for for Total Dramarama. Mm. I uh, one of my favorite episodes that I I got to write was where um, Beth. So Courtney's doing a, a diorama, like a tiny diorama. Okay, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and then Beth accidentally shoves a bunch of the furniture up her nose and and can't get it out. And then we have like a little scene happening in with the furniture and the booger family up her nose. Yes. <laughs> so it's a little bit I know it's so gross, but that's what I like. So Beth just is so fun to write for. I also love, uh, gosh, I love, I love Gwen because mm -hmm. I love Gwen because she's got that kind of dark, like you know, gothy aspect to her. I'm shocked you don't say the guy you pick on the most. You know, Brick. Brick, Brick for sure. I mean, Brick. What Brick was hilarious. <laughs> he was so focused on his uh, military training. Yep, <clears throat> and just the name Brick. I don't know who named him, but it, perfect. It, it's, it's it's so cool. Perfect name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Brick. If I'm Mark, I think when he Brick MacArthur reporting for something. Like that. I'm sorry. I'm like sorry. I like. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I yeah. love it. And what about you? Who's your favorite? Of like for? Oh yeah, you told me for the different uh, seasons. The different seasons. So you you gave me that answer. All good. Well, yeah, I love. Yeah. In different episodes, there are different characters I yeah. love. Oh, there's, do you like Cameron at all? You know, oh, you can see him in the collage, right? Oh, yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I can't point good. So I, see, good. I see Cameron there. I like Cameron. Took Didn't I take Cameron, or Joe, take Cameron, Cameron under uh, her wing a yeah. bit? Yeah. yeah. And C Cameron, we got to do some voice records together. So that was really fun. So it's fun when you get to do voice records with the other uh, actors because you mm -hmm. can you can really play off of each other like and uh, then when you're by yourself but when you're by yourself it's fun too because you can i could probably guess who your least favorite character is <laughs> that's easy for me lightning because he would always call you a dude <laughs> sorry <laughs> lightning always called me a dude yeah which is you know that's okay that's okay uh that's also funny because i there's a lot that a lot like the times have changed as the seasons have gone. So there are a lot of things you look back on and you go, okay, can't do that anymore. 
that maybe wasn't the best. Oh, this worked though. So we can do this. So it's always a learning process and you always have to know what's going on around you globally so that you don't, um, you don't alienate a segment of society. Cause that's the last thing you want to do. You want everyone to feel like they're included in their scene, but you also want to hurt them on the, on the challenges. <laughs> Now, uh, Lori, what who, what is your favorite total drama season? Your favorite? Oof, uh, let's see. It could be a se- if it helps. It could be a season you were on. You know, Joe. Was on. I, uh, yeah, was I did. I did really love that season. I did. I loved that season. But I also mm-hmm. loved World Tour. I like that. I loved World Tour because. It was, I think there were 26 episodes for that one. So it was Mm. a really long one. Whereas I think subsequent seasons were um, still, they were 13, like they were 13 episodes Mm. and then Mm. another 13 made a different season. So with World Tour, you could really, we could really sink our teeth into the character um, stories. Mm. And the fact that we were going all over the world meant so many different opportunities for challenges. So that was to me really fun. Plus writing songs was a good, was a good time anyway. So mm-hmm. I would say that. I think that was a very involved season and a very well pro- well produced season because we needed the the musicians and the studio time for music and and everybody did just such a great job with it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. No. Do you consider? I consider it separate. The fifth and sixth, you know, all stars and Pocket Two Island, the same because you know, like they they sometimes merge. If that makes sense. I yes. consider them split, like different. In my opinion, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yes. Yeah. I can see them. I can see them different. Yeah. Because yeah. like you know, there's different casts. If that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Sorry. Yeah. Then. For sure. For sure. You got to introduce some new characters, and mm-hmm. and that's a tough process. Like. To figure out which characters would be okay to add to it mm-hmm. on a show that has such a such a um, loyal following and a following mm-hmm. that that are really invested in the characters and and really care about them. So to introduce new ones is difficult, but then it does allow for for viewers to fall in love with other characters and and really get to know other characters. So. Yeah, I, I like I like new characters, but I also really love the comfort of being able to write for the characters I know the most. Okay. Did Especially you, Owen. Did you come up with any characters? Like, no, no, that was oh. that was strictly character traits okay. and character like developing characters a little more mm. in the room. Uh, new things about them would come up would come up. Mm-hmm. But they were usually very established. Uh, Tom and Jen are in really good at figuring out what specific traits and types of characters to add into the mix. And then you get George and the team uh, animating them and just trying different looks. It's really cool to see. It's very cool uh, to see it happen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, since you mentioned some- did you hear? Okay, Lori. Did you hear about the two new seasons? Total drama. You, no. No. Oh, you're messing with me. Did you? <laughs> no. no that'd, that'd be cool if Joe came back. You know, for the two new seasons. It would. It would. It would be very, very cool. But I have no. I don't know. And if I, no. it, I, I don't know what they're planning. Oh. Um, I'm not sure yet. But I know it's gonna be good. It's <laughs> it's gonna be good. And I think that the, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to talk about any of this, but I, uh, sorry, sorry. No, no, that's okay. That's okay. If you're bringing it up to me. Cause I always like, cause I actually like to bring up to a lot of whole genre people. Cause they actually, I don't know, like they, they said they would love their character to be back. That's all. That's all yes. Oh, oh, anybody would, anybody yeah. would, because it's such a fun show to voice. Like you get, you, you find it and it's fun because you don't know. Whether you're, well, I did because I was writing, but other people don't know how long their character is going oh, to survive. Out. Yeah. So they would get the script and then they'd skim. 
ask him through and and find out and if they're safe that's you know live to get another paycheck and and do another script so it, it was you know it was a it was interesting to for them to go through that too because it is a process of elimination for them as well now uh if you were really on an island what three famous people dead or alive would you bring with you on your island Famous people. Hmm. Dead or alive? Dead yeah. or alive. Oh, boy. Okay. Good, because, you know, Total Drama Island. Island. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who would I have? Let's see. I, let's see. I, it would most... Uh, Kristen Wiig. Ooh. She's, she's, she's funny. Sorry. She's she would funny. make me... Yeah. She would just... We would just... I would like to goof around with... Her. I like goofing around. So it's going to mm. all be ridiculous. Well, maybe it should be one person who who maybe has some sort of skills to get us off the island if we needed to, or find us food. So, okay, Kristen Wiig. Um, boy, who else? Dead or alive? Prince. Okay. I love well, I Prince. Think a, well, I think of Prince, I think of Purple Rain automatically. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. exactly. Me too. Me too. I love Prince. And <laughs> as long as he can have his guitar, one of his... Cute little onesies. I oh, would have Prince on, and uh, ah, who else? Famous, dead or alive? Who seems fun? I'm gonna. Once we're oh, we end this, I'm gonna think of a thousand other people I'd want on the island too. So, can I say? Who, 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 who's famous that I'd want on the island? See, this is my last choice, so it's really tough for me. I might go with... No, 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 no. I stumped Lori. I think I think I stumped you've, you. You've, you've completely stumped me. You've completely stumped me. Uh, the Rock, maybe. Ooh, he could be like your survivor. Yeah, because I see. You look at him. He's oh my god. I'm not. Yeah. That, you know, he's like oh jacked. <laughs> yeah. So me, Kristen Wiig, Prince, and The Rock. How's that? And that's just off the top of my head. And I'll think of a million more afterwards. I, I love I love that you said I love making people happy. I do because I don't know if so I nice because I don't know if I told you for these podcasts I I started these April 2020 to help cheer people up, help spread positivity, help because this is like a tough time the pandemic for people. Yes, it makes people yes. be depressed. I will help cheer Absolutely. people. I love making people happy. So. That's a wonderful thing. Keep it going. Keep it up. I think that is that's that's the best the best goal to ever have. Thank you. Because it'll make you, as long as you stay happy doing it, I think it's great. Is there a role you would love to do in any movie or TV show that you would like to do? You haven't done yet, of course. What role would you oh, love to do? Oh, boy. You know, I've, it, I've always wanted to do a show, and this sounds really, I want to do a show that is, that's, a comedy, like a, I want to do a comedy horror or a comedy sci-fi. Mm. And I don't think I can do a sci-fi because of Rick and Morty. I don't think I compete with that. But I would love to do an adult animation kind of comedy sci-fi half hour mm. that has a that has a lost element to it that ha that would be and where i can play my not myself but where i can i can play to my strengths i would i would either if it's live action it's live action if it's animation then i voice it i write my voice i have control over that because i that is one thing i know i can do is me mm -hmm. so and then just surround myself with all of my you know my friends, because so many of my heroes are Canadian stand-ups, are writers I've met working in comedy and in writing. 
and nobody else knows them in terms of fame, but they are in, so talented that they should be famous. So that would be great that would, and fun. So you said <clears throat> Rick and Morty. So why, why I think of Rick and Morty, I think Morty. I can't do it, but you know. I know, <laughs> so I, I know, like, I know. <laughs> Pickle Rick. Uh, yeah. you know, like just, it's just so, so funny and so... To have a good amount of control over your show and its direction mm -hmm. and all that makes a big difference because comedy and anything creative is subjective. So you can, if someone doesn't like a joke you love, that's just not their kind of comedy. And that's okay because that keeps me working. If there was just one kind of comedy, mm -hmm. I'd be out of a job. So. So I like the I like a, a I like a lot of different types of comedy, and I don't care if it becomes the po most popular show in the world. But if I can get an audience of people who are like minded who enjoy it, I think that would be really fun. I like that. Can I recommend a TV show to you then? You yes, said you please. like. Okay, <clears throat> it's a comedy. And it's like a yes. murder mystery show. Ooh, I love it. Okay. Have you ever seen the After Party? The After Party. If it helps no. us with Ben Schwartz, he's like one of the main leads. If it helps. No. Wait a minute. The after. No, I haven't. Wow. Good show. Now you're frozen. Oh, I'm frozen? Yeah, but you're not. You have a nice smile and you look fine. Don't, you don't look like me with my. Like I've seen a ghost? I don't look like I've seen a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a friendly ghost because you're smiling at the ghost. Or the ghost is like, I got money for you, Joe. And you're like, yeah. Yeah, bring me your money. Bring am, I, money. am I moving now? No. <laughs> Over the years of your career, do you still keep in touch with co-stars and directors you've worked with? Uh, yes, yes. No, um, some, some no, because it's just the nature of the beast. You just end up, mm -hmm. you know, you don't see them. They go on their on a different in a different direction, and um, you just. You don't see them until maybe the next show you're working on. And then it's like you, that's the one cool thing about the business. You kind of know what people are doing. And then when you see them after years, it's like you haven't, it's been a day. So mm. it, because I think, especially on live action, you're, you're, you're with these people for so long and so intensely that you form a little family and they almost are part of your family or extended family. And then you see them again and it's just like, oh. And that, but for like, let's see. I mean, Merlan and I have kept in touch, obviously, because we see each other in work and then we can, we can see each other outside of work. Or uh, like Terry McGurin is one of my best friends. Um, and he, we did stand up together for Yuck Yucks before we ever, wow. either of us ever started writing. So we've done little tours and shows together. Um, and then, uh, like, yeah, Alex Ganatakis, she's a, she's a very good friend and she's worked, we've worked on other shows together. Wow. There's lots of writers <laughs> that you, you end up working together with on other shows mm -hmm. and then you can meet writers that you have such a, a bond with that immediately that you you want to work together on trying to write a show on trying to create a show so yeah there's you you do stay in touch like some and then then there's a showrunner for a show i worked on um I think it was in, tw I think it was 2008, maybe called the John Doerr show. And that was live action. And he's a comic. He's so funny. He's so funny. So if you look up John Doerr, he does a lot of hilarious stuff. He's Canadian from Ottawa and, uh, but lives in Alaska and tours all over wow. just, just for Alaska. laughs all the time. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty <laughs> wild. But um, so I stayed in touch when I wrote on that show, our showrunner, uh, Ed McDonald, he, we've remained very good friends since. So yeah, you do, you do. Some you do, some you don't. And then you just meet them by chance again. And it's really nice. Who would you say is the coolest person that you have worked with? The coolest. Whoa. Oh man. Hmm. You didn't choose me. You didn't choose me. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, well, I haven't, I haven't, 
No, like if people like you worked with, like, oh, you didn't choose me. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're gonna see this. And say, thanks, thanks. I'm not the coolest person you've ever worked with. Okay, coolest person I ever worked with. Hmm. 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 This is t so you stumped me on these because. Good questions, Lori. Right? They are great questions. They're great Thank questions. They're too difficult for me. I need easy Thank questions. You. Like, what did you have for breakfast? Don't ask me what I have for breakfast because I haven't had breakfast. Me um, either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I had eggs yesterday. Sorry. Sorry. You had eggs? Okay, that's good. That's good. I had. I think I had uh, a power bar or something like that yesterday. Mm. So that's fair enough. Just like eggs. One of the coolest people I probably worked with was, who did I get to, okay, I got to, oh, I, okay, this is silly, but I got to do, it was, um, it was a, a web, web series. Okay. And it was called, But I'm Chris Jericho. <gasps> Oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. So I got to work with Chris Jericho as his um, as his landlord named Chad for some reason, and I was a total weirdo, and it was just really funny. It was a really funny series to work on, and he was just really silly and funny, and he was quite quite nice that was a good experience um there are so many more and i'm just not i'm not remembering them i mean i a lot of times my some of my coolest experiences have been in stand up uh, i got to do my just for, the the one of my just for laughs galas so my first just for laughs gala was with jimmy fallon and that was many years ago and he that was extremely cool. nice Sorry. Um, yeah, it was really nice and and watched my set, which they don't have to do. I mean, mm. they're hosting the show. They have to work on their, you know, concentrate on what they're doing. So that was really cool. And then the next one was Joan Rivers. And that was, to me, oh. that was a, a highlight of my career. And she not only was super nice, she came and visited the dressing room. And introduced herself to my husband and me. She said she liked my shirt, which means the fashion police liked my shirt. And that's all I cared about. And uh, she was wonderful. And then I got to do one with, um, uh, with Laverne Cox. And that, Ooh, I think, that I really me. wanted to do that gala. And so I got on to do that gala. And whole, oh, she was incredible. So there, there have been experiences like that where I have been working with people that are that are so professional and so accomplished and so wonderful that those are my kind of uh, stars in my eyes moments. And then there are so many people that are my day to day go tos that are the people that I've had the coolest experiences with. It's usually the people who are in the writing rooms with me where because I've been in the business long enough when a good idea comes out or someone is just kicking ass in the room, I'm like, this is a very cool experience because I'm seeing someone create incredible stuff off the top of their head and nonstop. So it's a, yeah, there's different ways of figuring it out. If you were like a writer, voice actress, actress, and comedian, what do you think you have done instead as a career and what other interesting hobbies? besides you know acting voice acting writing oh okay that's tough that's tough what i probably would have like i've always liked writing i mm. like writing but i mean i always was interested in um uh, criminology mm. so i listened to a lot of true crime i listened to a lot of true spy I love spy podcasts. Uh, so it might have been something along the lines of of that, maybe. Mm. Trying to trying to figure out maybe maybe 
yeah, I feel like something along the lines of that. Not a lawyer, but someone who who draw like a detective or something, if I could. Yeah, I know that sounds very different than what, but if but if I'm doing like I do acting, I do like I mm -hmm. do a lot of different things. Fine, which means I make a decent living doing all of the things I do. Fine, but. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think now it would be something along. I like I've just got into gardening, mm. which is weird, but I love it. Another thing that I would be also into doing, and this is something I've realized in later life, is I would love to. I would love to do something and I don't know what that helps people deal with death. Mm. I know that sounds very strange, but I uh, long that uh, my sister died um, about five, Sorry, almost please. five years ago. Thank you, right. and uh, and I really I really broke down. Like I really it, mm. it affected me. I'm still I don't you never get over it, but mm. it's still very very much uh, in your, in your painful mm. part of my life. So. I realized I was never prepared. And so I feel like from kids up, kids should be prepared to accept death as a thing that mm -hmm. happens. And, and it's not terrible. It's, it's just, it's going to happen. And mm -hmm. I just don't want anyone to ever go through what I put myself through mm -hmm. because I didn't have the proper tools or I didn't, I didn't realize it because I find in Western civilization, uh, everyone's going to live forever. We don't talk about that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think we should more. So maybe I could do a, an animated series on that. I don't know. Could be really down. A real bummer. But tragedy plus time equals comedy. And comedy is a great educator. So it could maybe, maybe I would do something like that. Maybe I still will. Sorry, sorry again, little pre loss. Thank you, thank you. I, I appreciate that. That mean, it means a lot to me. I'm much better, much better now. But who? Tell you, Laura was a mess. So <laughs> that, so that's your sister behind you. Your back. No, one? it's a, it's a, that is a painting that I got that reminds me of my sister and that my sister would have liked. So I, I ended up, I got a little bit of money from her estate, and that's, and I bought that, and that is uh, she was a retro person. She was very retro. And she also, um, we watched um, The Six Million Dollar Man together. I don't know Good if you show, know. Good show, by the way. Good show. Yeah. Good show. <laughs> and they had the fembots that had no faces. Like, they would, you'd take their face oh. off and they were like, it was a robot and they were really freaky. And that just reminded me of it. And uh, I just thought it was, a and it glitters and it's just nice. So... So I, I got that. And um, yeah, yeah. I just want to now do things that make some sort of difference and in helping younger generations feel good. And the mm -hmm. fact that you're doing what you do and you are so young is you. really mind blowing. And it's, it's really wonderful. It really is. So I'm really happy you're doing it. And I thank you for doing it. Yeah, you mentioned is it like the is it also part of the Bionic Woman series? If I remember correctly. Yes, that's correct. Because my because my mom loves those two shows. That's why I know that. that's my oh, mom's yeah. favorite shows of all time. So they're yes, yes. There's they, I love them. I love both yeah. of those shows. Lindsay Wagner. Yep, my my mom my mom would go along with you on that. Yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Max the Bionic Dog. Oh, my and Shepherd. Yep. Favorite band or artist and type of music? Go. <laughs> okay, I like lots of different music. You'll see that I do not. I, it's hard to find find me uh, find a favorite within me. Okay. I love um, I love Prince, obviously. I I love every. I like. Oh my gosh. Okay. I love Radiohead. Mm -hmm. I love um, Fleetwood Mac. I love, uh, what else do I love? I love 
I love hip hop. Mm -hmm. I love all kinds of hip hop. Um, gosh, like Big Daddy Kane, like old school hip hop. Um, I love a little bit. I like John Denver. Mm -hmm. A little bit of country, like the kind of John Denvery type stuff. Um, oh gosh, I like British music. There's bands like Super Furry Animals and the Doves, and um, gosh, who who else in this mix? I don't know. I have I have so many so many favorites. I can't even look at look at me. I can't answer. I can't answer any of your questions. Mm -hmm. I just like a lot of stuff. If I like it, I like it. And then I play it until I don't like it. And then it has to wait for a while. And then I like it again. What's your favorite? My favorite band of all time is Queen. You know Queen? I love Queen. That's my love favorite. Queen. Brilliant band. Okay. And Brian May. Yes. Because my, my mom, she raised me in like 70s and 80s music. So. Yes. Your mom's got great taste. I got to yeah. say. Yeah. Thank you. 70s and yeah, Queen is wonderful. I wish I had the opportunity to have seen Queen before Freddie Mercury passed. I you want really to talk did. about a voice? My thing, like, oh, oh my god, a voice. Yeah, <laughs> just so good mm -hmm. and so just himself. Yes, I mm -hmm. love that. And yeah, yeah, wonderful. I love the Foo Fighters. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy the Foo Fighters. Met them. Sorry. Met them. Mm -hmm. actually, yeah. I actually met them. They were <gasps> really? Yeah, favorite sports and favorite teams that sports at all? Um, I don't watch a lot of team sports, but mm. my favorite sport, because I did, I grew up uh, diving. I was a diver. So mm. I, I started diving when I was probably about eight, nine. Wow. And then I dove very um, competitively for until I was about, 17 18 and then i took some years off i started again when i went to university and then it was just like no i'm pretty much done this and done but i got a lot of uh like i went to i went to um i was on the national team for a while i was on the provincial team i went to the age group worlds um lots of competitions and stuff and so i love watching diving i like watching gymnastics mm -hmm. i like watching single person sports as opposed to teams for some reason i guess because i grew up as a single sport like a single person in a sport so I, I like that what about you i like hockey i'm a big big hockey fan what's your favorite team the canucks, canucks. really yes canucks. why why the canucks i love it okay so when i was two or three i got like a hockey stick from one of the players that's why <laughs> yeah it's as easy as that Thank you very much. You're my favorite team. Yep. Ever yep. since you, because you would think I'd be like a Blackhawks fan, because I'm like, yeah. Oh, God. I, I actually hate the Hawks. <laughs> I don't like uh -oh. them. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> Whenever I wear my Canucks jersey at school, people like, like, would be like, "Why are you? Wearing? What are you doing? Like, leave it alone. There's enough Blackhawks shirts here. I can mm -hmm. wear a Canucks." Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd have to be for the. I'd have to be the uh, Canadians because I'm from ooh. Montreal. Good team. Actually, my my actually two of my good buddies are with the Canadians right now. No way. The head coach, you know, Martin Saint Louis. Yeah. I actually had him on the podcast. Get out. And Rem Pitlick, he's one of their best players. The Canadians. And yeah, I'm on the again. Yes. That's so cool. Thank you. You've got friends from different facets of life all over the world. Thank you. Yeah, because they they they're really cool. Like when you watch Montreal, like oh my god, I got two buddies with them. Oh, I love it. I love it. You got to get to Montreal then one day. Yeah, I'm it's assuming that's where you're at. Is that where you're at right now, or Toronto? No, I'm in Toronto. I live in Toronto now, but I was born in Montreal, and uh, oh. and we moved to Ontario probably like when I was right around when I started diving. Wow, yeah. I've always wanted to visit Canada. I've always wanted to. Well, when you're ready, let us know. Let me know. Got you. You could show me around the show you know, around. country. Show you around the, well, I could show you around Toronto. It's big country, but I hope you come to Toronto. Toronto? Got you. <laughs> and the West Coast is beautiful, too. Every, it's a beautiful country. It's, so, it's, you know. 
So now, since you're a Canadian fan, do you hate the Maple Leafs? And you're in Toronto, so do you hate the Maple Leafs? No, no, no. I don't hate them. I don't hate them. I, I don't watch enough hockey to hate them, but I have some friends who get very mad at me when I say I have to be a, Can- or a, a Canadians fan. Mm. I know. They're like, no, it's true. I know. I know Megan Fallon, back young Gwen. She's a big, yeah. big, big Maple Leafs fan. Yes. Big, big fan. Yeah. Yeah. Terry McGurin, Senators. Really? Ottawa. Wow. Because he's from Ottawa. He's an Ottawa oh, boy. Terry's super into hockey. Hey, then if I got him on the podcast, we could keep going hockey. Oh, you could you could go down a long rabbit hole of hockey with Terry. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, favorite food, Corey? Favorite food. I love uh, probably, probably be French fries. French fries. I love French fries. I'm so, a vegetarian. French fries and sandwiches and pickles. Pickles are like, I love pickles. Pickles. So if yeah. I ever met you, give you pickles and fries? Pickles and fries. And you, I'll give you, like, here are the keys to my car. Here's my wallet. Here are my pin codes. Thank you for the pickles and fries. It's <laughs> a good trade. <laughs> now, uh, are there any projects you have in the works that come up for you? Or? Let's see. I've got, um, Oh, there, there's a few things that I've got in the works, but I am heavily NDA'd on them. So I'm sure you know the, the you got to sign the, you sign the paper and you can't talk. So, but I do have some things on the go and I can let you know once I'm allowed to, I can shoot you an email and say, Hey, this is da, 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 da. Uh, but. Total drama. So. I, know, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, what else? Uh, yeah. So I'm we're I'm pitching this one show that is that I'm not supposed to talk about, but I developed co-developed it, and mm. we've had pitches in the last week with um, Netflix and Disney and Cartoon Network and uh, Sony, DreamWorks. Lots of all those big name companies. <laughs> really <laughs> fun. Companies. I know they're ter- These pitches are terrifying because these are, you know, the network pros who can say thumbs up or thumbs down, and so you kind of have to make it entertaining. But you never know. You just never know. So you got to try and keep positive because it's an industry based on rejection. You get rejected way more than you get accepted into a writing room in on as for a role. For anything, so you just got to keep a positive attitude and keep moving. Like, so, yeah, no. yeah. So I have like lots of. St- I have my comedy album coming out, but mm. it is adult comedy, and then I have, uh, I have hopefully what we're pitching might get some traction, and uh, I'm working on a couple of different shows right now that I'm not allowed to talk about. It's so weird because usually there are a few I can, but mm. I I can't. Can't. No. Uh- Sorry. What is your advice for younger people? I'll come up, writer, voice actors, actress. What's your advice? I would say my advice is just learn as much as you can. Take okay. courses, find programs that uh, it, at college or university. I find colleges seem to have the better, and I could be completely wrong. It's been forever since I've gone to school. I don't ever want to go back. Um, but I, I think colleges have more practical. Mm. courses when it comes to that like how to write a screenplay how to how to write a script um or the radio like we have a a university here i think it's called the toronto university or just the name got changed but it has a radio and television course where you produce things and if you so if you want to produce you can learn that so i would say just exercise your muscle right 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 but also read books like um save the cat save the cat for tv is for television writers and save the cat is for um movie writers and you can find information just find whatever form of writing or style of writing suits you and that you want to do And just Mm -hmm. do exactly what you're doing, Joe. Network with people, bring people happiness, and 
and work hard at it. And it's all about exercising the muscle. So it's right, Thank rewrite, you. right, rewrite. And pretty soon it'll be secondhand to you. Perfect. I actually like stay humble. Remember you came from? You mean? Absolutely. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And every treat everybody the same. Yeah. Just with kindness and, and respect and, mm -hmm. and work hard. Cause that's do the thing. Nothing will get handed to you, but just do the thing. And if you do the thing well and you're nice, it's amazing how many doors get opened for you. Like that. Now, <clears throat> Lori, would you be willing to come back on for a part two, part two, answer some fan submitted questions? Absolutely. Yes. Yep. Because I bet there'll be questions for Joe, your writing portion. There'll be a lot, I bet. So oh, yeah. Yeah. Know. I would imagine some might be like not nice and I can answer those too. I am. And, uh, I'm okay with that. Now, before I ask you my last question, do you okay. have any questions? Do you have any questions? Oh my gosh. I feel like I've asked little questions throughout. What, I, what, what are your next steps after, mm -hmm. after this? Like, what do you want to move on to or what plans do you have for this podcast? What are your next plans for it? Mm -hmm. Just may just continue with these podcasts, like help cheer, keep continuing cheering people up. Because I always, like I said, I always like to make people happy, make a smile on their face. You know what I mean? Like always, yes. Yeah. I didn't hear, well, it's working. Have you seen me smile? Like, I'm frowned through this whole thing. I just smile away because mm -hmm. it's, it's making me happy. Okay. So I, think that's, I think that's great. Keep it up. And if you think of different things you might want to do, just yeah. go for it. Thank you. Yeah. Now, uh, now, is there anything you would like to promote and shout out that I help link down below, Lori, in the video's description? Let's see. Uh, well, I'm on Instagram. I'm not the best at social media. I'm terrible at it, actually. Uh, but I'm on Instagram. If you would like to follow me on Instagram, uh, at Lori Elliott. But it's L-A-U-R-I-E-L-L-I-O-T-T. -T. Okay. And I'm on Twitter at the, T-H-A floating head because we did a bunch of pictures of me uh, where I looked like I was just a head in different places and then we thought that would be a great your the best twitter handle and now no one knows how to find me so <laughs> that's really good right and I'm on facebook and uh, I don't have a website but I should I can design I can it for you sorry you can yeah, I have my own. I actually have my own website. I made it my own. So if I want, if you need help, thank you, thank you. Okay, I might, I might reach out to you then in a little, uh, in a little bit once I get my. I feel like I'm always playing catch up because of having ADHD. My my executive functions like. Coordinate. I understand. I actually have ADHD too. I think. I think oh, I do. do I think I do because. Oh. So if you need help, got you, Lord. Thank you. I'm terrible with scheduling. I am so bad at it, but uh, I, so I feel like I'm always catching up. I'm always playing mm -hmm. catch up. So I definitely will reach out for help. Well, Lori, thank you again for being an awesome, amazing guest. I had like a fun time chatting with you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Joe. This has been the highlight of my, I think, 2022. Is it 2022? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it is. This has been a real highlight. I've really enjoyed this and I don't do podcasts often because I'm always afraid of what's going to come out of my mouth. So I, this was just wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I had a fun time chatting with you. It was an honor, you know, having you. It goes both ways. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody, and stay awesome. And you stay awesome, Lori. Thank you. You too.